Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be sharing my top 10 favorite baby products that I've used since day one all the way into toddler years. My daughter is 16 months old right now and we have used these products all the time. Some products we use multiple times a day every single day. So I'm sharing this with you guys to help you guys find the right product that will work for you guys and to save you money because you'll be using the crap out of it like we have. So everything mentioned here will be linked below in the description box. And if you guys are new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We post videos here weekly and hit the bell notifications to get alerts when I post a new video. And if you guys found this video useful, please give this video a thumbs up to give me feedback. So of course, the second I start filming, my daughter is awake now. So we're gonna have to pause this and continue this later. One eternity later. All right guys, so like 10 hours later, here we are. Baby girl is down for the night. So I shouldn't get interrupted again. So baby monitors. We use the infant optics. My husband did all the research on this, so I will give him credit for that. He wanted to make sure that this baby monitor has no Wi-Fi capabilities. So it's strictly just a monitor that you would have to be in close proximity to see it no wi-fi because we just want it to be safe no one can hack into it um just in case you guys didn't know people normally hack into baby monitors very easily because it just has like a very weak so i think it's bandwidth so if they have like a weak bandwidth they can hack into it whatever regardless there's no wi-fi on here and no data is being shared over the internet for like other creeps to like watch my baby sleep because that's weird and it does happen so as for the camera the clarity is great during the day and at night like the night vision superb i can see her clearly i can see her eyes open or closed i can see her like breathing i always make sure to see if she was breathing because you know like first time mom you're always wondering if they're breathing or not it also comes with two lenses: one is standard and one is zoom so the standard lens was good enough for us and the camera you, you can tilt it pan it all around and zoom in so i love the capability so for the monitor it's very lightweight it also comes with this antenna so when you're on the same floor you should put the antenna up, but when you're on different floors, then you put it down like this for better reception. So the battery life on this is very good. If, if you just wanna put it on power saver mode and just listen to it audio, then you can just turn it off and then you can still hear the volume um, on this power saver mode. And usually that will last about 10 to 12 hours. So when I'm awake, I keep the screen on, but when I go to sleep at night, I don't need the bright screen on, I just turn it um, off. So you can, Change all the settings. You can put the volume up, the volume down. You can change the brightness to like high or low. They also have like a power saver mode, timer. You can also zoom in. They also have an alarm on here and it's also two-way audio. So you hear her and then you can also push to talk so she can hear you. So I've used that a few times, push to talk. Like she'll wake up sometimes like kind of like just cranky and crying and I'll be downstairs and I'll just push to talk. I'm like, okay, it's okay, mommy's coming. So overall, we love this camera. It's very good quality. You can see it clearly and um, you can hear everything well. And it also says there's like a cam one on here. So I think that you can connect multiple cameras to one monitor. So if you have, you know, two young babies, three babies, whatever, you can connect multiple cameras to here. The only little con that I have about this is the temperature reader. There are days when it's just a little couple degrees off, but then there are days when it's like 10 degrees off. So it'll say that it's like 80 something in her room when it's only 70. I don't know if that's just our monitor. I don't know if it's because Ray has played with this and dropped it a bunch of times. So, um, I'm not sure, but we have a little thermostat reader in her room, so it's not a big deal to me. That's the only con that I would have to say about this baby monitor. All right, so white noise machine. So when baby is in the womb, there are actually a lot of noises going on in there. They hear you talking, breathing, your heart beating, like fluids in your body moving around. So it's actually like a very loud place. So when baby comes out, into the world, it's easier for them to sleep in that white noise environment. So we use this thing religiously every single day, multiple times a day, and I love it. So the hatch looks very modern looking, very sleek. It's a white color. Not only does it have like white noise features, it also plays lullaby. Water noise or rain noises. Um, they have a variety of things you can pick from. 
or if you don't need to use it as a white noise, you can just use it as a nightlight too. So it's definitely multi-purpose and you can control it either manually tapping it. On the bottom of the hatch, you can control the brightness, the volume, or you can do it all on your phone via the hatch app. With the Hatch app, you can control everything on there as well. You have more features that you can do. You can save things as favorites. You can program it to play this or for a certain duration. And you can change the colors on there. There are a lot of different features that you can do on the phone. So having the white noise machine, she knows when it's time to go to sleep. Every time we turn it on, she knows. I mean, now she's able to walk up to the nightstand herself and turn the hatch on when she knows it's time to go down for the night. So I love this hatch so much and I highly recommend it. So we bought a two-stage crib mattress. One side is stage one for babies. It's a much firmer size to prevent SIDS and then stage two which you just flip over to the other side is the softer side which is safe for them once they're a toddler so at, usually after the age of one so we just spent money on one mattress but we get to use it longer in two different stages if you guys are a new parent i recommend also getting a mattress cover to protect the mattress because your babies or toddler will spit up vomit poop explosions like those things will happen. So to save you some time from all that cleaning and also to protect your mattress, you will be glad that you have the mattress cover. All right, so cool mist humidifier. So the ideal humidity levels inside the home is between 30 to 50, some say 60% is fine too. Anything too low makes the air very dry, so it'll irritate their nose, all their airways, their throat, so like they can have like itchy, scratchy throat and they'll cough, or if their nose is too dry, they can have like a nosebleed but on the other end if it's too high then the air inside is too moist and it can increase the risk of having like mold or mildew all these bacteria living in the room and that's not safe to inhale that either. I don't wait for it to dip down below 30 to start using the humidifier. I usually take out the humidifier when it's winter, so the air is cold outside and dry, and we have the furnace running, so that also causes all the air to be pretty dry. So usually I have it out in the winter, and then I put it away once like spring comes around. You have to use a cool mist humidifier, not a warm humidifier, because it's safer for babies, um, to prevent SIDS. You don't want them breathing in hot air. And then also safer for toddlers that can move around. You don't want them grabbing the warm humidifier and potentially burning themselves. The only con about cool mist is that you have to clean it way more often than you do with a warm humidifier because the heat kills the bacteria in there so there won't be like moles or mildew building up in there but with a cool mist humidifier you're just running water in there all the time so you need to clean it as much as possible i usually clean it like every other day and then once a week i would really clean it with like soap and stuff and get in all the crevices to make sure that it's completely clean and to help with that i also bought these sticks it has like these beads in there to help keep the water and the humidifier cleaner for a long longer time and I think you just change that out monthly. Bobby pillow. This is a multi-purpose pillow that we've used since day one and we still use it now. So in the very beginning, I used the boppy to help me with breastfeeding because I didn't really have like a position nailed down. I was still trying to learn. So the boppy helped to hold the baby so that my arm won't get tired or numb from holding her for so long in one position. Also, if you have like a C-section, boppy also helps with that as well. I also have the other breastfeeding pillow, my breast friend. That's also very good for moms who have had C-section. So that way it alleviates any of the muscle that you would have to use in the abdominal area to hold your baby or having the baby sit on your belly. So with the breast friend pillow, that's also very helpful. I'll probably put together a breastfeeding tips and essentials video. If you guys are interested in that, let me know below. So back to the boppy pillows. I use it for breastfeeding and then later on when she was practicing how to sit, we also use the boppy pillows so that it gives her support so that she doesn't just jerk back. So it's also useful for that. I've also used it before. My husband or sister would bottle feed her. Um, she would just lay down on the boppy and we would just bottle her like that. And nowadays she uses it while she reads her book sometimes. So just use it to lay on her tummy on the boppy. So we've used this boppy many times since the beginning and we're still using it now. So definitely recommend this boppy. So diaper bag. So this is for, you know, an essential for baby and also for mom. This is the diaper bag that I have. So I got this in 
pink and um, it's a lot smaller than the other bag that I got and this is also a backpack. I recommend getting a backpack instead of like those messenger diaper bag because it's just way more convenient, easier to maneuver with a diaper bag on your back and holding a baby or running after a toddler. Um, it's just way easier than a messenger type of bag. So the one that we have here, like most diaper bags, have like a slot over here for the wipes. Use this, the sides to pull the wipes out if you want, or you can just take it out completely, um, your preference, whichever is easier for you. And then on this side, it's just an extra slot. We usually keep her water bottle in here. The front is insulated and it has three pockets for baby bottles. And then they also have another insulated side, probably where you put like um, fruits or whatever snacks that require um, insulation. By the way, guys, this thing did not come with it. We bought this separately. This is like a handy little gadget that we got it's just a metal ring what you do is you just hook it here to the bag so when you're at like a restaurant instead of putting your diaper bag on the floor you can just hang it to the chair like this or to the table but obviously we haven't been going out to eat at restaurants since quarantine started back in March but before that this was useful for that on the back of the diaper there's this little slot in here. I usually put like my chapstick and my small little wallet in here. And then on the back, you can open the back to get to the backpack as well because there's a zipper in here. So in case you, for some reason, can't go in the front and want to dig for it, you just want to go in the back. There's access to the back as well. Inside the bag, I think it's very roomy. There are several pockets in here, some with zippers as well. And it's just great size to fit like a changing pad in there, like 10 diapers uh, and whatever other stuff you need to bring with you, like tablet, toys, whatever. It's great size and it's not too bulky for me to carry around. So we have the Nuna Rav a convertible car seat so we actually have a lot of nuna stuff i mean i may be biased but i love nuna stuff so much we have the nuna infant car seat which is the pippa we also have the nuna stroller and then we also have the nuna rava which is my favorite of all of them so with a rava you can actually put an infant in there as long as you get the infant inserts because you know they're very tiny and the car seat is a little bigger so with the inserts it helps fill in all the extra space so that they can be fit and snugged into the car seat so safety feature wise they have energy absorbing foams padded all around they also have side impact protection and the entire frame is made out of steel so safety wise spot on and it should be a very important factor when you're shopping for car seat. And then next on that is the comfort. This car seat has 10 different position recline. So whether they want to sit more upright or more reclined, you can adjust all that in the settings. If your babies are a little taller and they're rear facing, you can extend the leg room by an extra two inches. And I feel like a lot of convertible car seats don't have that feature. So I was very glad to have that because Ray is a little on the taller side. <laughs> She did not get that from me, obviously, but um, we love that feature. We've used it already and it's helped her extend her legs out a little more. They can hold up to 50 pounds rear facing and then up to 65 pounds once they're front facing. So they'll be definitely using this for a while. For the amount that you're spending on this, I think it's very worth it because the safety feature, the comfort, it also looks like very bougie. So they have like extra features. They have like a dual flip open cup holders and like all these like extra padding on their seat belts and the crotch area so it doesn't like press on their skin. It's very breathable for them to sit in there. Like comfort is also very important because babies don't like long car rides. So if you have to go in a long car ride, you want them to be comfortable, be able to nap in there and um, you know, just a less cranky baby while you're driving because that's the worst. All right, so next on the list are several few things that all come under like maintenance and care. So the first is nail clipper. So let me tell you, babies, toddlers, I don't know what they're eating or what it is that they have in their body, but their nails grow so fast. I literally have to cut her nails every single week. So like fingernails every single week toenails grows out a little slower so maybe like every two weeks for toenails maybe three weeks if i get lazy but usually very often so what i use is just a simple nail clipper this is a small travel size nail clipper nothing special this is not a 
baby nail clipper. This is just a travel size clipper. However, if you're afraid to use a nail clipper, I understand because many people are, you can also use like those mini nail filers just to file them down short instead of clipping it. They also have other baby nail trimming stuff like a Dremel with like a flashlight and it kind of tells you like where to stop, sort of like I think I've seen it for like dogs. I think I used to have them for my dogs before, but sort of something similar like that for babies. So that's all personal preference on how you want to clip. But me, I just have this cheap travel size nail clipper and it does the job. I am a licensed nail technician, so I know a thing or two about nail clipping. So quick parent tip, if you want to trim your baby's nails with a nail clipper, make sure that it's a travel size. It doesn't have to be like labeled baby. It's all the same. And it's about direction and distraction. The best way to hold them is in your lap. So like they are facing the same way you are and the way you're looking at it's like you're holding your own hand. Like you're about to trim your own nails. That's the easiest way to trim their nails. Same thing with the toenails, same thing. It's the same position. You know, babies are flexible, so you can just, you know, bend their legs up a little more and trim it, easiest way. So I started trimming Ray's nail like when she was very young and I did it often, always the same setup every time so that she can get used to it. So nowadays she can just watch TV and just give me her hand and then I'll just trim her nails really fast. But as far as distraction, I always have to either put on her tablet or the TV. That's the only way she'll sit still for me to trim her nails. 8B under leg maintenance is a booger sucker. I had this out here earlier today, but Ray took it somewhere, so I don't actually have it in front of me to show you guys. So hopefully I find it or I find like a video of us doing it. But essentially, it's a booger sucker where you put the tip into their nose, their nostril, and then you suck it like a straw. The concept sounds really gross, but no worries, you will not be sucking any boogers into your mouth. It'll be in this little barrier and it's super simple to clean afterwards. You just rinse it, wash it out, you're good. Way better than this bulb suction that every baby comes home with from the hospital. I mean, this does help suck things out, but um, not completely, because every time I would use this, I'll keep seeing like more stuff come out of her nose. Like it was like never ending. But with the booger sucker, we suck that out clean. Also with this, you can't see what's in here. So like when you're cleaning and rinsing this, like I don't know if there's still boogers in there because I can't see it. You know, but with the other one, it's clear. You can see it, easy to clean. I mean, we still have this around. I don't even know why, but we don't use this. So. Wherever this booger sucker is that she hid somewhere, I'll find it one day. But we do use that when she has a cold and it's really helpful. All right, so Aquaphor. We use this thing every single day, multiple times a day. Ray actually has mild eczema, so we use Aquaphor all the time. Any dry spots or any of her eczema areas, we always apply Aquaphor. The best time to apply Aquaphor is immediately after their bath, like within three minutes. If you apply it on there, that's the ideal time. Their pores are still open, and, and that's the best way to get the Aquaphor like into their skin. So I have this regular Aquaphor bottle. This is like a household staple just like Vaseline. We have this in the house. So I have this like down on the main floor because I apply it on her like several times a day. And then we also have like a baby aquaphor upstairs in her room. I think they're the same exact thing. One is just labeled baby probably, but don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but I've used both for her like baby aquaphor and regular aquaphor. I think it does the same job. Not only is aquaphor useful for eczema, it's helpful for diaper rash. We've used it for diaper rash before and it literally went away within the same day. And then you can also use it for like um, their drool area. So like once they're teething, they drool so much and then it can become like rashy around this area. So just apply Aquaphor and it works. Sometimes when she gets like a scratch or a cut, I use Aquaphor as well. Aquaphor is like the Neosporin for babies plus like lotion kind of thing, like moisturizing and like Neosporin. So the glider is basically like a rocking chair, but more comfortable, it's bigger, it's more like a sofa loungy chair, but it does the same purpose as a rocking chair. So the glider that we have also came with a matching ottoman. It's usually a bigger size ottoman. I mentioned this in my previous video um, when I did her nursery tour, but the ottoman is bigger, so my legs don't fall off when I'm rocking or swiveling in the chair. The chair also swivels all the way around, 360 swivel, and it's just comfortable. We've used the crap out of this chair ever since we brought her home from the hospital. I would nurse her there, we would rock her to sleep using the glider we still use the glider now and we also read books to her in the glider she likes to use the glider herself she'll sit in it and she'll also climb on the ottoman just to sit on there as well all right guys so that's it those are our top 
10 baby must-haves that we use from day one all the way into toddler years. We truly use it all the time and I can't recommend it enough. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I will catch you guys in the next video.